What's going on, guys? Welcome to, I think we're at episode 36 now of Dispersing, bleh, of dispersing the Cloud. Um, clearly, the cloud still has me. So, uh, just a little recap of uh, the last week. And again, I'm consistently late, so this one's a little late. Um, I had uh, a couple different um, production things. Uh, we had one of my authors, Elizabeth Shar, do her first book reading of the year. And we got another one lined up for her next week, so that was kind of awesome. Um, and that week just kind of flew by. Uh, I was reading a book called Strength-Based Leadership. Um, and this is a book that my buddy Daniel Rios is currently reading for his master's degree. So uh, I saw it on his kitchen table, and I'm always looking for books to read. So um, I snatched it up. All in all, it was pretty good. Um... It was by, um, I think the name's in the, in the title, it's like Tom Rath and then one other guy. Um, and so I'm just going to go straight off my Twitter, guys, because you guys know that I use my Twitter for notes. So that's what I'm going to go off today. I'm not taking notes uh, and doing the whole spreadsheets anymore because it's just taking me too long to do these things. Um, but I'm still doing them. I love it. So uh, great leaders are always investing in strengths. Um, this is something that they were kind of bringing up with saying that... Um, leaders who invest in weaknesses basically tear their employees down or tear their teams down but leaders who invest in strengths build their teams up so they were saying great leaders always invest in people's strengths as a leader you need to spend time focused on your leadership skills and strengths um, this is something i probably didn't do uh, when i was in a leadership position was really go through and say, hey, what are my skills as a leader? And let's map those out so I know someone asked me, hey, as a leader, what are your skills? Boom, 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 boom. And these are the areas that I'm going to focus on because it's what I'm good at. Uh, it kind of goes back to what uh, Gary Vanderchuk likes to say. Gary Vanderchuk likes to say, do what you do well, and the stuff that you don't do well, let other people do. If you focus on people's weaknesses, they lose confidence. Um, this is, this is true, I believe, and this is kind of like a little bit of a qualm that I started having with the book. Um, some of these quotes were really good, but they didn't really back them up with statistics. That was the one criticism of this book that I could give. Like, uh, It's a textbook, so everything that's in it, they're just assuming that you're going to take for granted. With no, They're not trying to make an argument. They're stating, this is fact, this is fact, this is fact, and it's all based off surveys. Um, and it's Gallup Poll. Gallup Poll is the one who's taking the surveys. And then Gallup Poll is uh, the uh, producer of the book as well. And we all know that Gallup Poll, um, their survey on who's going to win the election was horribly wrong. So uh, I don't know if this stuff is right. Some of it sounds good. Some of it doesn't. Um, but that one sounds right. I mean, if you focus on people's weaknesses, they lose confidence. I feel like that's a correct statement. Um, are there statistics to back that up? I don't know. We usually, um, and again, each quote, you got to remember, these aren't really backed up by statistics. I don't know which ones really hold water. I'll try to dig in and see which ones that I really like. Um, we usually recruit for job skills, not for strengths that our team might need or is lacking. Now this one, I can say, this is probably true. Um, we look for someone to hire as a total package of this person has this skill, this skill, this skill, this skill. They can do the job that's needed. Um, but a lot of times when you're building teams, a lot of times you need someone on the team who's a motivator. And if you have a bunch of salespeople but no motivator, um, that can kind of be a problem. So. Um, the book is kind of suggesting that we should be building teams and recruiting people based off of their um, based off the way that they would fit into the team, not necessarily uh, their total skills. No two great leaders are the same. Again. Are they backing this stuff up? I think there's qualities in leaders that kind of stand out leaders eat last um, by Simon Sinek that book argues that there are distinct uh, qualities in leaders that make them great 
And um, I would, I mean, Simon said it gave a lot of evidence to that. So I would probably disagree with this statement that uh, not, I mean, they're not going to be exactly the same, but I think there's qualities that resonate in each great leader. Um, so again, I disagree a little bit. Strong teams don't always agree. Some songs, strong teams do agree. Um, again, it was kind of vague in that. Relationships, Trump. Um, but again, I love these quotes. Like, that's a great quote still. Um, relationships, Trump. And building trust. Oh, relationships, Trump competence. in building trust. Um, it is basically trying to highlight the ability to build trust, like your competency, ability to build trust with others as being something very, very valuable in a team. Because if you're able to build trust, you can start swaying people in certain directions that need to be swayed. And um, again, it's just, it's really focused on, focusing on the things that people do well and not necessarily their weaknesses. Uh, I believe there's, I forget who it is, there's a company right now Simon Sinek again was talking about it. They, they don't fire anybody. Once you get hired, you're hired. Um, and they try to focus on your strengths and put you on teams that that let you uh, do well. Great leaders do not react for the needs of today. They plan for the future. Um, oh, they initiate for the future. Sorry, some of these spell... Spelling's a little off because I do this all audible with my voice and sometimes Siri likes to change my change my words up. So great leaders don't always react um, on the needs of today. I got a buddy who runs a ad company and he talks about his necessity to initiate and his assess necessity um, to move first and not reacting to the market because by the time you react to the market, it's already passed. It's already happened. Uh, Gary Vandercheck again talks about this a lot. One, when, if you're reacting, it's already too late. Minimize your frustrations and maximize your joys. That was just a cool quote in the book. Um, I liked it. When you focus on your strengths, they say that you minimize your frustrations because you're always focusing on the things that you do well. And you're maximizing your joys because you're always patting yourself on the back for doing well. When do you actually spend, where do you actually spend your time and money? This was a great quote. Where do you actually spend your time and money? This will tell you a lot about what you really value. Where do you spend your time and your money? Um, for me, I spend all my time and all my money doing creative stuff. Those are the things that I value. Um, where do you spend your time and money? That's, those are the things that you value. Show your pain to build trust with employees and teams. Uh, this this chapter, this quote was kind of on vulnerability and being able to uh, show your pain in order to help others uh, through similar situations. We can go back to Wounded Warrior. Um, oh, sorry, the Wounded Healer. We read that about six, maybe two months ago, six weeks to two months ago. Um, again, talking about the concept of when you're open and honest with people about your own wounds that humanizes you and it builds trust within them to expose their own wounds. And um, I think we would find that humanity, regardless of us having all these different cultures and everything, we are homogenous. We are, we are one. We're all experiencing the same thing. Um, we don't think we are. We think our situations are unique to ourselves, but we're all experiencing the same pain, the same weaknesses, the pain, the same insecurities. Um, this is something that me and my buddy Casey O are going to be talking about on our new podcast um, up in Fresno when we get that rolling. Um, exciting stuff happening. Um, I'll tell you about that next week, um, a.k.a. tomorrow, because I was a little late. Again, um, only you, only your competitors will get a charge out of publicly displaying results. Oh, okay, this was interesting. So this was um, about sales staff and publicly posting results um, to, like, let's say we're putting a, a sales leaderboard, right? The people in your sales team who are competitive, they're going to get a charge out of that. But, unfortunately, the people who aren't competitive, they're actually going to lose motivation on that. 
So the only way that posting sales numbers is actually like good is to post them in your office under like maybe a banner or something and bring your competitive people in, slide it open and be like, check it out. This is where you are on the board. Dang, that's awesome. People who want to see, show them where they're at. People who aren't competitive, don't even don't even mess with them because they're not they're not going to get motivated and charged up by that. Uh, another great book that I don't believe I read this year is Drive by uh, Peter Thiel. You need to check that out. Um, no, I'm sorry, Daniel Pink. Daniel Pink wrote that one. Um, <clears throat> you need to check that out. He talks about motivation and what motivates people. Um, Carrots and sticks or internal intrinsic motivation. Interesting book, fun, like phenomenal. If you're a sales manager, read it. It'll make you rethink the way that you hand out bonuses. Um, only your competitors. Being able to protect how you do something, oh, predict how someone will act and react helps us confidently plot the course for the relationship. Again, this is just quotes that I liked. They didn't necessarily like black back any of this stuff up with facts. It's just kind of like great stuff that I like to hear. Um, discipline could be the basis of truth. Discipline could be the base of trust. Sorry, obviously I'm dyslexic. I can't even read the stuff that I wrote. So discipline could be the basis or the base of trust. Um, when you have a team and they see that you're disciplined, they see that you do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, week by week, year by year, um, and it might take two or three years to build trust, they they will feel trust in your stability. They will feel trust in your routine. They will feel trust in your discipline. Um, that's probably my thought of the week for the week. Um, negative. That's not my thought of the week. Um, that's a great quote. My thought of the week or my process for this week is um, dealing with difficult situations and when times are not good, when times are not good, um, getting through those and um, pushing past them when you're not having a blast doing the things that you do. There's moments in this journey that are incredibly, incredibly rough. Um, they're, the highs are high, the lows are ridiculously low. Um, and reassuring yourself that you are exactly where you need to be. This is, this is something that kind of um, came up this week. It's an incredible frustration when it happens because you feel, again, like you're going nowhere and it, it's not working, but yet you're taking these little tiny baby steps and you, you take two forward and three back and three forward and one back and it's like this constant roller coaster. And it reminds me of when I was getting my college degree. There were moments when I was getting my college degree, and for those of you who don't know, it took me seven years to get my undergrad. Um, I'm dyslexic. I didn't read till I was 23, so the first part of college was pretty much just a waste for me. Um, but I remember being 23, 24, and still in an undergrad program. Um, incredibly, incredibly frustrated. Frustrated feeling like I'm so far behind. I'm so far where the rest of my friends are, I'm not. And they're graduated, they started their jobs, they're doing this, they're doing that. <clears throat> Incredibly frustrating and depressing. There are times in this where I feel the same thing, where I feel at times that I'm really far behind the game. A lot of my friends have families, my friends have houses, my friends are doing all these things. And I'm 32 years old and I'm like, oh, I'm still just scraping by. The reality is, or the epiphany is, and I have to keep reminding myself that just around the corner is my fast forward button. Um, I've been putting in a lot of work these last two years, and I'm putting in another, I mean, it's going to be probably another year before everything really starts taking off. But when things really start taking off, I'm going to be back at the level of in income that I had when I was a sales manager and I'm gonna have the same amount of free time that I have now. Um, and uh, the same thing happened when I got my master's. I ended up getting my master's right after my undergrad. 
I got my master's at 28. And all of a sudden, I was ahead of all my friends. And they were like, dude, you got your master's already. You're so ahead of the game. How'd you do that? Um, so I, the master's for me was a fast forward button. This week, I just have to keep reminding myself that that fast forward button is when all these projects that I have, irons in the fire, um, that I've been tediously working on for the last two years, and again, probably another year, another two years, when I hit my fast forward button, I'm going to be leagues ahead of everybody else. And as frustrated as I get, and as hard as it is to keep reminding yourself and convincing yourself that you're on the right path and you're not, like, you don't need to go get a real job, like, this is fine, everything's going as planned, um, it, it's difficult, but I've had some awesome moments um, this week and just great reminders of it, um, writing some new songs. Um, I posted uh, tidbits of a couple of them on my Instagram, uh, and I'm actually taking um, I'm taking Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Snapchat and all social media other than Facebook off this month. So um, I'll be back on Instagram in October with a bunch of new stuff on there and um yeah good stuff to come that's what I'm gonna lead you leave you guys with um I do like that ending uh, discipline uh could be the basis to be the base of truth that'll be your guys's ending quote today um sorry this one was a little late a lot late and a little sloppy but uh I'm glad I got it done I look forward to talking to you guys soon see you next week or tomorrow